I stand here to speak, not to antagonize anybody, Mr. President. I just want to make my prefatory remarks, but rather in accordance with my conscience and duty. If I offend anyone in advance, I will ask that you please accept my apologies and accept the fact that despite the dangers and concerns by my family, I abide by my conscience and duty to our country. Mr. President, uh, I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege as the chairperson of the Blue Ribbon Committee. I inform the public of our findings of these matters of public interest investigated through 18 hearings throughout seven months detailed in our report, and I move that our draft report and its attachments be inserted into the Senate's records. It is our duty to the Filipino people in these matters. A, of transcendental importance amounting to at least 1.1 billion pesos or 11 billion pesos of the people's money, and B, of the integrity, dignity, and independence of the Senate. From the very beginning, Mr. President, I never asked to be given the position of the Blue Ribbon Committee. I think the former Senate President Coco Pimentel, as well as the current Senate President, our esteemed colleague, Senate President Soto, is aware that I did not ask for any committee, that it was handed to me. I never asked for it, and I took it out of duty, knowing that you need a lawyer in the Committee on Blue Ribbon. The Senate of the Philippines basically has two constitutionally assigned functions, Mr. President, lawmaking and to oversight. And in pursuit of the latter, our rules created the Committee on Accountability of Public Officers and Investigations called the Blue Ribbon, which is tasked to make findings or judgments, if you will, and it is very unique, it is the only committee that can do that in the Congress, tasked to have judgments on malfeasance, misfeasance, or nonfeasance committed by public officers and their cohorts or accomplices, e.g. those in the private sector. Therefore, the Senate is accountable to, in the people, to the people to report on its findings and to tell the people what we have done in this investigation. We owe them no less, Mr. President. Our findings or recommendations are of great persuasive nature, especially when seen in the light of the convictions of former Commissioners Argosino and Robles of the Bureau of Immigration and the filing of criminal cases and eventual detention of the accused in the drug cases that we had previously investigated. In fact, Mr. President, your committee is the only committee in the whole history of Congress that has managed to get people locked up in jail uh, for life. For this particular investigation on family, we owe it to our constituents, the people of this republic, whether or not we are in favor of the draft, partial committee report. Our mandates command us no less. At the onset, I was touched by our healthcare workers, Mr. President. Their plight was really uh, in a very sad situation at the time. And they, the healthcare workers, despite being our frontliners, had to plead in the midst of the pandemic with the government just so they could receive the salaries, benefits, and allowances that were due to them as they and their patients were dying or were getting sick. This was the original impetus for the hearings. I was joined there by Senator Pimentel, uh, Senator Pakirinan, and Senator Hontiveros, and Senator Gillon, if I'm not mistaken. We succeeded in passing Republic Act number 11713. That would be what we call uh, the resulting legislation out of that investigation, Mr. President. The Public Health Emergency Benefits and Allowances for Healthcare Workers Act, which became law in April 2022, Mr. President. But in our investigation, further led us to a clear and disconcerting and evidence-based findings of fraud, waste, and abuse pursuant to the report of the Commission on Audit. When we went further down that rabbit hole, the executive viciously attacked COA and the Senate. 
Since then, the issues of grave importance, such as the separation of powers among the great branches of government, the right of the Senate to exercise its oversight functions, and the, and the right of the public to know arose, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, in, a, uh, in connection with this, James Madison, former President of the United States and one of the founding fathers of the United States of America, in Federalist No. 58, 1788, said, an elective despotism was not the government we fought for but one in which the powers of government should not be so divided and balanced among the several bodies of magistr magistracy or magistracy as that no one could transcend their legal limits without being effectively checked and restrained by the other. Yung pong ating gobyerno ay talagang hinati na tatlong hanay para hindi mag-aabuso yung isa sa isa't isa. Ayan po ang tinatawag na balance uh, of power or the uh, distribution of uh, 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 governance uh, power, Mr. governmental powers. Judiciously exercising our oversight powers, your committee, the Blue Ribbon Committee, motu proprio and with several resolutions, launched this investigation, circulated its report, and has been following up with senators for their signatures, signifying their votes. Our, and our latest letter, the two, is dated 20 May 22. I have a copy here right now, Mr. President, and I'm attaching this as part of the record. I look forward to clarity on the respective positive or negative responses of our senators. I even look at the possibility that they may say they will dissent or they will amend or they will interpolate, which is, has been the practice. The senators are representatives of the people and who possess a national constituency. We require our fellow senators vote so we can bring formally to the plenary. If you are voting for or against our report, let us make it clear in the record. Unang-una po, ang Senate Blue Ribbon Committee ay talagang yan lamang ang tayong committee na binigyan ng napakalaking kapangyarihan para palabasin ang malfeasance, misfeasance, and unfeasance. At kailangan magkaroon tayo ng closure dyan. The reading and inclusion of any document in the record of the Senate as well, by the way, in the journal, may be ordered upon request of a senator after his brief explanation of the object of his request, which is what I'm doing right now, Mr. President. The Senate's full disclosure on the primarily plunder controversy achieves closure for our people. I am doing this as chairman and a chairman in a quandary. I respect my fellow members. I do not try to antagonize them or badmouth them. I respect the Filipino people. But we cannot shirk from our responsibilities or our duty to act on a committee report by not signing it, either in agreement or disagreement. And by doing so, we bring it to the plenary where it can be deba debated, Mr. President. Pwede yung pagdebatihan yan. Adyan natin marinig kung ano talaga ang mga naging posisyon natin. The people of this country should not be denied a judgment or at the very least a debate on whether there was malfeasance, misfeasance, or nonfeasance. Hindi natin dapat ipagkait kung paano tayo nakarating dito sa uh, inabot nating desisyon ng Kongreso. Otherwise, why create a committee if we cannot decide, if we cannot even show how we voted, Mr. President? The Blue Ribbon found acts, omissions, and evidence tantamount to violations of law of the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act and clear malevolent acts of favoritism, leading to prejudice against our people at the most challenging chapter of our nation's history, an international pandemic. Dastardly acts informally were done with impunity. One of the questions now, therefore, is what must be done with PSDBM? Yusek Lau, Mr. Leong, who is now Deputy Ombudsman, and Mr. Michael Yang, and the others who are part and parcel of this investigation. We recommend prosecution against them based on the unearthed facts and laws. That has been done in the committee report. First among such persons are Michael Yang and Lin Wei Xiong. They are business partners who practically 
finance, and organize the operations of Farmily. We know Farmily as a severely undercapitalized corporation. Wala hong sapat na kapital. Sa pagatang kapital po nila ay 650,000 pesos lamang. And seriously lacking in the requisite legal and technical qualifications. They are really mere agents to secure government contracts worth 11 billion pesos. Makin nyo, napakaswerte naman po nito. Eh, siguro, kahit asilo dito, makakapag-raise sa 650,000 ang kailangan lang ay koneksyon para makakuha ng 11 billion pesos of contracts. Eh, ngayon, naghihikaus tayo para makautang at makahiram ng pera para madala natin ang ating basa sa pagkaayos. These two, Michael Yang and Dean Wei Xiong, had also been in the past implicated in the illegal drug trade. Michael Yang and Lin Wei Xiong are nationals of a country that has seized, occupied, developed, <coughs> and militarized parts of Philippine territory. They are not citizens of the Philippines. And prevent <coughs> our fishermen from fishing in our own exclusive economic zone, among other repetitive and continuing legal and immoral acts of bullying. The wife of Lin Wei Xiong, <coughs> Rose Nono Lim, even ran for a congressional seat in Quezon City and was accused of massive boat buying, probably financed by her, her husband's, and her husband's partner's illegal activities. <coughs> On many years, they did not even pay taxes. And when they did pay, they paid only a few thousands. From businesses commencement commenced in Davao in 1999, Michael Young only began paying income taxes in 2018, and as of 2021, had only paid 191,600 in total, consisting of 7,600 pesos in 2018. You lang po ang binay the tax. 110,000 in 2019, and in 2020, 74,000 for a total of 191,600. Para mga linta, acting like leeches, they suck the blood out from all of us. Nagpalaki sila, they fattening, they fattening themselves without even giving back to our country and its people who have welcomed them here. Their plunder was truly phenomenal, perfidious, unprecedented. They cannot be allowed to sojourn here any longer. Dapat dinideport yan pagkatapos mahusgahan. Expedited proceedings must now be initiated for this person's removals. Pero wala pa ata ako narinig o nakikita na ginagawa ng ating gobyerno. In fine, our hearings, the testimony heard, and the documents collated all point to Mr. Yang Hong Min, aka Michael Yang, as the one who not only financed and operated, <coughs> but given his tremendous influence, engineered this whole odious enterprise. The nefarious scheme would not have been successful without the indisp indispensable cooperation of public officers who must be held accountable. Lloyd Christopher Lau, erstwhile head at Procurement Service, Department of Budget and Management, PSDBM, and Warren Rex Leong. They are subordinate of Mr. Lau and now overall, na promote pa. Pagkatapos hindi makuha si Lau sa ombudsman, deputy, Pindalata ni Manny Leong, <coughs> the second highest anti-graph officer, official of the Philippines. At yan, inamin ni Presidente na yan ay makakatulong niya nung kampanya niya bilang Presidente at nung siya mayor. Evidence shows that Lau confessed even to negligence in ensuring procurement of medical items at best and lowest prices. From pharmaceutical products, manufacturers, and supplies, Rather than persons or corporations without the appropriate legal, technical, and financial capabilities to guarantee supply to the government. Lao gave 8 to 11 billion pesos worth of government procurement contracts to Farmily, Pharmaceutical Corporation, a corporation without the appropriate legal, technical, and financial qualifications required by law for procurement contracts. Malino po yan, right now, emergency purchase. 
Evans, evidence also shows that Leong, Liao's assistant, was procurement director of PSDBM when it gave the procurement contracts to Farmerly. He signed documents for approval by Lao. He was in charge of requesting quotations for possible suppliers and recommending the approval of price monitoring or market survey reports, which suggested that Farmerly submitted the lowest bids and to justify award of the contracts to Farmerly. For example, for a 54 million peso contract for face masks under purchase order P020 00181 CSE on April 20, a review of the actual bid proposals of the two other companies would reveal that these were dated 15 April 2020, a day after the date of purchase order to Farmerly, which is 14 April 2020. The supposed bid of two other companies, Cosmic Technologies Incorporated and Ashton Homes, using the price monitor market survey report of PSWDBM, were both dated the day after the purchase had already been awarded to Farmerly. Talagang lokohan. Lau and Leong, public officers are clearly criminally liable under, among others, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Section 3E, Republic Act 3019, undue injury to any party, including the government, or giving any private party any unwarranted benefits, advantage, or preference in the discharge of its official administrative or judicial functions through manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross and excusable negligence. And Section 3G, entering on behalf of the government into any contact, contract or transaction, manifestly and grossly disadvantageous to the same, whether or not the public officer profited or will profit thereby. PSDBM Inspection Division Officer in Charge Jorge Mendoza submitted to not seeing, admitted to not seeing, in Aminya, and thus not inspecting the supplies personally. Instead, he just relied on documents and followed the instructions to him by his superior to simply sign the requisite documents to make it appear that supplies had actually been arrived, had actually arrived and been inspected and delivered to the PSDBM when in fact they were allegedly still en route from China. Palating palang, pinayagan na, pinirmahan na ng hindi nakita. PSDBM Inspection Officer Mervin Ian D. Tankintik admitted to signing inspection certifications despite lack of actual inspection, citing orders from PSDBM management, particularly accounting office, for them to simply sign them. Pirmahan nyo na lang, huwag na kayong tumingin. There are from Farmerly Pharmaceutical Corporation itself other co-conspirators in allowing its corporate vehicle to become an intermediary for graft and corruption under the revised corporation code. Wang Suyan, Farmerly's president, a Singapore national now, who is a fugitive from Taiwan for allegedly stealing approximately 1.2 billion pesos just a few days after he incorporated a company named Farmerly in the Philippines. Lincoln Ong, a former interpreter, interpreter of Michael Yang, na sa kanyang admission, 80,000 lang ang kanyang sweldo, who admitted that Michael Yang was Farmerly's financier. Crisel Mago, Farmerly's regulatory affairs manager, without a valid TIN and should be charged for perjury. Dami niyang pabalik-balik dad na ginawa. <coughs> Their Dargali siblings, Mohit and Twinkle, respectively the corporate secretary, Mohit, and the president, Twinkle of Farmerly, are also crucial cogs in the machines, in the, in the corporate wheel, in the corrupt wheel. The Dargani's attempted to frustrate the Senate's efforts towards uncovering the truth by after being cited in contempt and under questioning from Senator Hantiveros and, this, and the, yours truly, trying to escape to Malaysia, initially to Qatar or Dubai, and when the plane broke down to Malaysia via a chartered jet that came from Singapore and waited for them in Davao City. Ang halaga ng charter ay $151,000. At yan ay patungo sa Qatar, pero ginamit rin nila patungo sa Malaysia. The third kind is thus demonstrated and remain to be serious flight risks. Kaya hanggang ngayon, nakakulong sila sa Pasay. Pinakulong ng inyong committee. If they are released sooner than June 30, then they will surely abscond and leave the Philippines. Nahuli sila sa aeroplano. Talagang sinadya at binabati ko ang ating Sergeant at Arms 
na siyang lumika ng pagkakataon para mahuli ito mga ito sa Davao City. At doon sila kumuha at gumamit pa ng pangalan na peke para makalabas. Dala-dalawa passport, itong dalawang ito. Moy Dargani failed to pay donor tax when he admitted to giving Twinkle Dargani with an 25 million Lamborghini. Mr. President. Pero pa yung mga coach nila, Lincoln Ong, tatlo-tatlong uh, uh, coach na mga Porsche, pati si Michael Young, may Porsche, pati si Rose Ong, ang gaganda ng coach, may Cadillac, Escalade, at kompleto, pati pagtira doon sa tinatawag natin uh, sa Forbes Park at saka sa Desmarinas. Ayan po yung mga kotse, makikita natin. 13.5 million Porsche Carrera, si Lincoln Ong. This report, therefore, is an assertion of Senate independence. It is an act of the Senate that declares no more impunity. We recommend the investigation and or punishment of those responsible for this rape of our very scarce and <coughs> needed covers and needed resources. The rape of our coffers made worse because of the acts were committed at the time of great need and when the survival of our people was in peril. In the middle of a pandemic. Pagitan ng pandemic, nakuha pa nilang gawin niya. We must exact accountability, particularly from our public servants. And that's why this report has to be signed, Mr. President. Dapat pirmahan. Asa bagat itayo lang naman sa Committee ng Blue Ribbon ang pwede magsabi na may ganyang judgment. We must ensure that none of those responsible go scot-free. Our collective voices through this report can be loud enough to rouse the ombudsman from apparent slumber or the Department of Justice. What will happen to our country and its people if nothing is done to these malefactors? Anong klaseng bayan tayo? Pinanood ng buong bansa at nakita na talagang gumawa ng katiwalian na napakalaki at kilalang kilala ng kampanya. Sila sabi sa akin lahat ng tao yan. Pero ngayon, Hindi natin pipirmaan bilang senador, accountability of public officers para man ang pangalan natin, dapat each senator must be accountable to at least announce his votes or sign whether he's approving or disapproving, assenting or rejecting the report. What will happen to our country's people if nothing is done to these malefactors? Walang closure. Ito na naman tayo. Kaya sinasabi, imbisiga na imbisiga, pero wala nangyayari. Pero ito kailangan magkaroon ng uh, conclusion. Never again, we must shout to the highest heavens, never again. The investigation into the family pandemic plunder was not without difficulty. There were thousands of documents to read and many more were refused to be handed over. Numerous pieces of testimony to understand and distill. Napakahirap. Madulas yung mga testigo. Lying witnesses or resource persons, and most frustratingly, the executive's public aggressive and illegal acts against the Senate that were intentionally designed to prevent the Senate from having free and impeded access to testimony, documents, and other evidence crucial to its investigation and to the truth. Up to now, wala pang report yung customs at saka BIR kung anong ginawa nila dito sa mga hiningi naming uh, galaw nila. It bears emphasis that the executive prevented his cabinet and all executive department officials and employees from attending only our particular Blue Ribbon Committee hearings on farmery and the accounting of pandemic funds. Sa doon mahaba, kaso nababas susraw sila, hindi po totoo yan. Yan po ay pawang kasi ng galingan. In fact, tayo pa ang nababastos. Ilang beses nagtataas ang boses Si Mr. Lau, lalo na sa ating lady legislator, Lucia Tiratolong. Moreover, the executive sought to entirely discredit the investigation and investigators. It was as if the hearings, as if the executive desperately sought to prevent one thing from coming out. And what is that? The truth, yung katotohanan. The executive to COA said on 17 August, sa COA, 17, 2021. So, umpisa pa lang. Quote, stop that flagging. God damn it. You make a report, do not flag and do not publish it. 
because it will condemn the agency or the person you are flagging. What you are doing is F-L-O-G-G-I-N-G, period, close quotes. Same executive Tokoa said on 27 August 2021, wag kayong maniwala sa mga investigasyon. Investigasyon, kita naman ninyo, walang nangyayari. Pero lang, we will investigate. Puro lang, we will investigate. We will investigate. The executive said it was he who appointed Lau. That is not disputed. To critical posts in the government, even before primary. Because he trusted the embattled former official who had previously worked with him in his 2016 campaign team and when he was city mayor. Quote, Ano masama kung nagbayad ako ng utang, said the executive. Close quotes. And with respect to Man Michael Young, wala naman si Michael Young. He has no manufacturing factory. Walang record yan. Hindi criminal yan. The executive said on 8 September 2021. Sa kabila nito, hindi natin ma-issue-issue yung contempt order kay Michael Young dahil nagtatago at hindi hinuhuli. And again, the executive on 15 September 2021 during his talk with the people screamed, anak ka ng pi or puta. Sorry, I have to say that. Bantay ka. Babayuin talaga kita. Bababuyin talaga kita hanggang mamatay. Addressing it to the chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee. The executive was also fiercely, also fiercely warned me that I quote, I want, I would like to remind Senator Gordon that I will campaign against you. He did not do that. I knew he was going to campaign against me. And that is par for the course. All politicians accept that, Mr. President. I don't take it against him. Kaya lang, lumalabas na talagang medyo matataranta doon sa nangyayari sa committee. Hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit. Wala naman ako sinasabi. This new interference cannot be allowed to continue, especially in the future. We have a new administration coming over, a new Senate. The authority, powers, and prerogatives of the Senate are constitutionally granted. The Blue Ribbon Committee is invested with power and duty to investigate cases of malfeasance, misfeasance, or nonfeasance committed by public officers. This has been the very basis of our authority for calling the motu proprio investigations on family. It is our sacred duty to defend the truth, to ferret out the truth, and above all, to defend the Senate as a co-equal branch of government. Those things said, I urge you, all of you, all of our members here, to continue to ensure that the Senate remains independent, to remain resistant, and free from undue constraints imposed by the executive and to remain the bastion of the rule of law. After all, is it not true that a central precept of our government structure is that the Philippine Senate is independent? For their support, solidarity, and principled stand, I thank the people who have signed, the senators who have signed so far. Senator Senate Minority Leader Franklin Delon, Senator Pampilo Ping Lakson, I think he will propose amendments as well, and this could have been done by the other senators who did not sign. Senator Emmanuel Pacquiao, without reservations. Senator Leila de Lima, Senator Aquilino Martin Coco Pimentel, the third. Senator Kiko Pangilinan, who made reservations to interpolate. Senator Lisa Ontiveros Baraquel, who made inter uh, reservations as well. And Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph G. Recto only a few days ago as promised, signed, and that he would make some amendments on the committee report. Something that I wish could be done, hopefully, tomorrow, so that if it is discussed, then we can debate and make amendments. Salamat din po sa napakaraming grupong nagbigay sa amin ng lakas upang ipagpatuloy ang labang ito. Hindi po laban ito. Ito ay ang ating paninindigan. Hindi laban ito. Wala naman po tayo kinakalaban eh. Kasama po dito ang iba't ibang haligi ng healthcare sector, Filipino Nurses United, Philippine College of Physicians, Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, Philippine Neurological Association, Philippine Pediatric Society, Makati Medical Center, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, Philippine Bar Association, the Chamber of Commerce of the Philippine Islands, Child Rights Network, Bishops Businessmen Conference, Investment Houses Association of the Philippines, 
Financial Executive Institute of the Philippines, Judicial Reform Initiative, Management Association of the Philippines, Makati Business Club, Shareholders Association of the Philippines, the Ateneo de Manila University, Ateneo de Naga University, Xavier University, Ateneo de Cagayan, De La Salle University, De La Salle University Shape Up, uh, Shape Up Defeat COVID-19, Wilson's Policy Center, UP College of Law, Class of 1972, De La Salle University, again, College of Law, St. Paul University, Manila, San Beda University High School, 1962, graduates, po ng ating Pangulo yun. And at the de Manila, University High School alumni groups of classes 1957, 61, and 1965. Again, I respectfully move that the report I circulated for signatures and which had garnered nine signatures be inserted into the records of the Senate. To allow future generations to read and judge for themselves what we had done in order to recommend the punishment of those responsible for the billions of pesos mess and hopefully to even recover the money that has been stolen from our country. We have a responsibility to let the public know how we voted to protect the Senate and the integrity of its proceedings. Otherwise, why would we still call ourselves senators if we cannot reveal our position and cannot justify our positions? This is the forum of the people. This is the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Here, we can debate, we can admit, we can reject, and we can take our positions and the people can listen to these positions so that they will be guided accordingly. We are all in the pursuit of truth. Katotohan lamang po. Fighting all the time for a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Let us give hope to our law-abiding citizens that there is still meaning in choosing what is moral, what is lawful, what is just, and what is right. Tandaan po natin, ito ay ginawa nung panahon ng talagang tag pandemic na nakakatakot na maraming namamatay. Let history and more importantly, the sovereign Filipino people ultimately be our judges. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Yan po ang aking uh, report at kung maaari, sana mahikahit natin pumirma pa yung gustong pumirma. Binigay ko lang kay Senator Gachel yung kanina yung gusto niya rin basahin. At kung yun ay magagawa, pwede pa natin pagdiskasan niyang bukas. At kung di naman, again, I reiterate my motion uh, to insert the record and its attachment for the record, uh, our draft report, and that and its attachments be inserted into the Senate records, including this speech. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and God bless the Republic of the Philippines. Yes, uh, there is no objection. Um, the motion is uh, approved, and therefore we place on record all uh, the manifestation made by the gentleman from uh, uh, Sambales. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I think it, uh, it's a very good step, and I hope that uh, in the future we can all learn from this very sad experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.